What's going on everyone back at it again with another Bible study. I want to go in and I want to talk about why it doesn't matter if you have a lot of stuff here on the earth. If it doesn't matter if you're full of, of riches, doesn't matter if you have a full bank account, doesn't matter, doesn't matter if you have possessions that are of high value. Does that matter as a Christian? Is that important? Okay, so let's go to Luke chapter 12 verse 13. The parable of the rich fool. Then someone called from the crowd, Teacher, please tell my brother to divide our father's estate with me. Jesus replied, Friend, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? And then he said, Beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Then he told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, What should I do? I should have room for all my crops. And then he said, I know. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have enough room to store all my weed and other goods. And I'll sit back and say to myself, My friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Now take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, you will die this very night. Then who will get everything you worked for? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. So, by this parable that Jesus said, it is more important and it is of more value to have a profound and a rich relationship with God than to store up earthly possessions. What this parable is saying, what Jesus is saying in this parable is having a rich relationship with God that is profound, knowing the heart of God, having an intimacy with the Holy Spirit is far more valuable than anything that's on the earth. Are these things important to an extent? Sure. But this should not take the importance of having a relationship with God. This should not take your eyes off of Jesus. If, you're, if your career, if your studies, if whatever it is takes your eyes off of Jesus, then we have to be very careful there. Because and we're, if that happens, that we're esteeming said thing higher than our relationship with God. There's nothing wrong with having those things. But what is priority? What do we esteem higher? What do we? What is higher in our heart? What is higher in our mind? So it says right here, because people will tell you, you have to work to store up for the future. You have to work to store up, you know, savings, get this and that. You got to have, you know, this business to hand down to your family or you, how are you going to do this and that? But what if God tells that person, you fool, you will die this very night. That's the reality of it, guys. The reality is not... Will I get a paycheck tomorrow? Reality is, what if you pass away tonight? What if God takes you tonight? Then who will get everything you worked for? So you spend 20 to 30 years to save up for, I don't know, retirement or something. But you have no relationship with God. And let's say God, God forbid, God decided to just take you that very night. What was the point? There was no point to it. The whole point of this earth was to get to know God. Your point on this earth was not for you to, to chase a career. That's a plus. That's that's a side mission. That's a side mission. The side mission should never become the main mission. The main mission should always be the Lord and making him known to others. Evangelizing, telling people about Jesus. Showing the heart of God to others. Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. Jesus also said in the book of Matthew, Why gain the whole world and lose your soul? But even if you have a good life, even if you live to be 80 years old, what is a good 80-year-old life compared to an eternity with God? It's a droplet in the ocean, a droplet, probably even less than a droplet, probably not even visible. It's not sin to have possessions. Hear me. I'm not saying it's sin to have possessions. But what I am saying is, where is your priority? Where, what do you emphasize more? What do you, what do you have? What holds a more important place in your heart what has the throne of your heart who is on the throne is it yourself or is it the lord truly i ask you i'm not you can say one thing but the way you live says another god looks at the way that you live god lives at your, god looks at your actions more than he looks at your words the bible says also in the old testament I forgot which book but the bible does say they honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me god wants your heart he wants the deepest part of you of your soul, of your mind. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Jesus gave us that commandment. That's the first one. And then it's love one another as I have loved you. Love others. That's the second commandment that Jesus gave us. But it's those two. Moving on. The same chapter, verse 22. 
Then turning to his disciples, Jesus said, "This that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food to eat or enough clothes to wear. For life is more than food and your body more than clothing. Look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for God feeds them. And you are far more valuable to him than any birds. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? Ask yourself this very important question. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? So if you, if you worry about tomorrow, if you worry about if you're not having enough money for tomorrow, how does worrying make it better? How does worrying add a second to your life? It doesn't. In fact, it takes away time. So don't worry about tomorrow. About if you're not having enough, if you belong to him, it says right here, look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for God feeds them. And you are far more valuable to him than any bird. Let God be true and every man a liar. And if worry can't accomplish a little thing like that, what's the use of worrying over bigger things? Look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And when God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? And don't be concerned about what to eat and what to drink. Don't worry about such things. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers all over the world, but your father already knows your needs. Sandorokoi. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and he will give you everything you need. So don't be afraid, little flock. For it gives your father great happiness to give you the kingdom. And then Jesus goes on to say, Sell your possessions and give to those in need. This will store up treasure for you in heaven. And the persons of heaven never get old or develop holes. Your treasure will be safe. No thief can steal it and no moth can destroy it. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. So from verse 22 to verse 33, that strong word. Jesus was basically saying, don't worry about the earthly things. Father God will take care of you. Father God will feed you. Sometimes the way that God feeds you might just be beans. Might be sandwiches. Might be peanut butter and jelly. A ham sandwich it says here, these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers all over the world, but your father already knows your needs. Now, why is he saying this? Because God is not as concerned to provide for the unbeliever as he is to provide for the one that believes in him. But how do you know your faith is genuine? How do you know you really believe in God when you obey his commandments, when you walk as Jesus walked, when you deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow him, when you pursue Jesus with all your heart? When you love others, you will outpour what's inside of you. If God is love, so if he abides in you, then you're going to outpour love. Love one another as I have loved you, Jesus said. So there you have it. God himself, Jesus is saying, these things are temporary. Don't live for the material things. Live for the heavenly things. Where no moth destroys, nor thief can steal, and the persons of heaven never get old or develop holes. They are eternal. Can you only imagine the kind of stuff that's up there? So put more emphasis on, on the things of heaven. Things Put more emphasis on having a relationship with God, on repenting, on getting right with God. Because not even tonight is promised like God told this person in the parable. You will die this very night, you fool. Then who will get everything you worked for? So for example, you work 10 years to become a surgeon and God decides to take you away on your graduation night. You see what I'm getting at? You see what the word is trying to say? It's like it, it's, it's not wrong. It's not sin. But if that surgeon didn't have a relationship with God, he just wasted his life. It's not going to matter anymore. Now those hundreds of thousands that the surgeon was planning to get, nobody's going to get them. I just want to put that into perspective. Read it for yourself. I pray the Holy Spirit illuminate this word to you. Again, this is Luke chapter 12. From verse 13 all the way to verse 34. So I encourage you, check those parables out for yourself. I pray the Holy Spirit illuminate your mind and gives you a revelation. Because it is, it's good to have knowledge. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved. And it's good to grow in the knowledge of God. But when the Holy Spirit truly breathes on the word and, and brings the word to life in your mind and gives you that revelation and understanding, that's when it takes effect. God bless you all. Like, subscribe, turn on that bell notification icon. Feel free to check out the other videos up here or down here, wherever they are. All right, guys. God bless you all.